All right, what is up everyone? It is Coach Jen here with the Fit and Fulfilled team. If you don't know me, I am the CEO of Jen Wall Fitness and the head coach of the Fit and Fulfilled team. And today my question for you is, do you wonder which supplements are going to help you most on your health and fitness journey? I know there's a lot of information out there about a lot of different supplements and a lot of different tactics in order to how to lose weight or get in shape or better your health, et cetera. And it can be really confusing trying to determine what is actually going to work and what's not going to work and what is real and what is BS. Um, so in this episode or in this video today, I'm going to be sharing with you the five supplements that I recommend um, to help you on your way to reach your health and fitness goals. And so without further ado, uh, let's jump in here. But first, actually, I'm going to go ahead and say um, you do not have to like or subscribe this to this video or this channel unless you find this to be helpful. And you may also comment down below if you have any questions along the way or if you would like to see more. I will say that I am just getting into the habit of building out videos. And so you're not going to see any fancy transitions or anything super appealing in terms of videos. But the information here will be super helpful for you. And as I get better and get into the habit, bit more so, I will become faster and also be able to give you more high quality videos along the way. But the information quality in this video is going to be superb. Um, but that being said, um, so I'm going to show you the five supplements will, that will give you the most bang for your buck on your health and your fitness journey. Um, so diving in here, I have all my notes over here. So if you see me looking this way, that's what I'm doing, reading through my notes. Okay. Um, but the order that these are in are not in um, best, worst, um, most recommended, least recommended, etc. It's actually just in alphabetical order. So um, we are starting off with vitamin B12. So if you don't know about vitamin B12, it is a water soluble vitamin. It's really known for its um, benefits to um, our cognitive um, function, brain health and neurological components of the body. Um, it's very helpful in keeping nerve and blood cells healthy as it plays a role in making our DNA. It is generally used, um, so the supplement vitamin B12 is generally used um, for our elderly population as well as our vegan or vegetarian population um, because they tend to lack less of this nutrient in their body. So they tend to be more um, B12 deficient or B12 insufficient. As we age, neurologic components of health become more of a priority, as you probably know from um, your parents or your grandparents aging that they tend to decline and how easy it is to process information um, or, you know, put information out there, etc. Therefore, supplementation, supplementation may be necessary um, for, the, for that population. Vegans um, may need to use vitamin B12 um, as they can also become insufficient or deficient in B12 due to their lack of animal sourced foods um, that they are getting in through their diet. Um, so, um, if you don't know about B12, B12 is something that you will most likely find being stored um, in animal foods or just find them in animal foods. And before I do this, you will have to excuse me because I do tend to yawn only when I'm speaking a lot or I'm on videos, et cetera. So I may yawn throughout this video. Um, and to go along with that, just saying again, getting into the habit of simply producing videos, um, editing them is really not a part of that habit quite yet. And I do want this to be um, very authentic and very genuine and me giving you the information that you need. Um, so if I yawn, it's going to probably be in this video. <laughs> Um, but that being said, again, B12 um, is going to be usually coming from an animal source. Reason for that is just like you and I need B12, we need it within our body, so do, so do animals. And so animals will store B12 in their body as well too. And so whenever we eat animal products, um, there will be B12 in those products that we eat. Um, but the way that B12 is actually um, created is animals do not create B12, they just eat B12 and it stays within their body. The way that B12 is created is via bacteria within the soil. So bacteria in the soil, they do their thing, they munch, 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 and then they create B12. Um, and so whenever um, we grow plants, plants also can have that B12. Um, and then whenever, um, you know, animals eat those plants, then they store that B12. Um, but that being said, um, so what I have found over my years of being a teaching assistant, as well as going through my bachelor's in nutrition program, going through master's level classes and coursework, um, internships, and um, even more so mentorships and all this. Um, so I have a wide uh, or a vast um, 
education. Um, yeah, vast education history. Um, so that being said, B12, when it comes to B12, what I have found is that a lot of our clients, a lot of just people in general outside of the elderly and vegan or vegetarian population will find themselves in a um, not so good spot with their B12. Um, so that being said, like on our coaching team, um, whenever I review lab work for clients, um, I will find that the clients have very low B12 and they need to supplement with B12 in order to get that up, even though they still eat animal products. Um, and the reason for that is, is animals are not getting as much B12 because their quality of food is lower and they don't have as much B12 in their quality of food because we are depleting the soil faster and faster um, of, it, of its B12 every year. And even animals are being supplemented with B12 so the animals can have B12. So if the animals are being supplemented with B12, it's a good idea to also supplement um, with B12 as well too. And now I'm going to put a statement or a disclaimer in here that I am not a doctor, registered dietitian, or any type of medical professional to tell you what to do in order to have you reach your health and fitness goals. These are simply um, my experiences, and you can take these um, thoughts that I am producing and putting out there, and please take them to your doctor and have them give you the thumbs up before trying these recommendations um, that I am stating here. Um, so that being said, B12 um, is being supplemented to animals. And in that same manner, I do also recommend that we supplement um, B12s um, ourselves as well too. And so anybody can see benefit from having enough B12. Um, it's pretty, I would say, I don't want to say easy, but B12 is water soluble, meaning that it's a little bit harder to keep stored in our body long term because it's water soluble. Um, so if there is excess B12, we can pee that out. Um, we can, yeah, it's usually um, released through urine. Um, so it's really hard to get an excess of B12. So taking B12 daily um, is not necessarily going to hurt you. Um, the toxicity level is hard to reach. Um, and then along with that too, um, along with that too, there are benefits in terms of metabolism. So I mentioned that these are going to be supplements um, that will be helpful for your health and fitness goals. Um, th those who may have a hard time um, getting B12 are those who may have digestive issues. Um, they're not as, as easily able to absorb um, B12 or just food in general, um, break down, absorb it. Um, like I said, vegans, they have a, vegans and vegetarians, they have a, um, less foods that they eat from animal products. So vegetarians have less, have less foods that they eat from animals, uh, animal products, and then vegans don't eat any animal products. So this is why it may be helpful for them. Elderly individuals, it usually is harder for them to um, break down protein and usually um, animal protein is what most people eat. And so if they're having a harder time breaking down protein and um, they may not be getting B12, et cetera. And then last but not least, um, I think that's pretty much it. So um, it would be super helpful, maybe super helpful to take vitamin B12 in order to help support your metabolism and also your cognitive brain and neurological health and functions. All right. Okay, so that is vitamin B12 for you. The next supplement is going to be the most well-researched supplement in the world. And not only has it been the most studied, but it also has a winning track record in terms of what the results have come out with for this supplement. Um, it has been shown to have no negative side effects, drawbacks, or claims that it doesn't work as well as we believe it does. So it really, if we set the standard here, it's meeting that standard and maybe even higher, okay? Um, so this is going to be creatine monohydrate, and this is something that I recommend. It does have health benefits, but I really recommend it for like the fitness benefits that you would like to see when trying to reach your health and your fitness goals. Ginger turmeric tea, it is the best. Um, I get it from Trader Joe's if you guys don't know. Okay, so um, it works by increasing recovery and performance and even cognition. This occurs by creating, um, by creatine, helping us produce more ATP. So if you guys don't know, um, we have different energy systems that we pull from. Um, in order to help us have energy when we're doing activities such as running, jumping, um, weight training, um, anything, etc. And one of those energy systems that is the fastest for us is going to be um, 
the ATP. So I'm going in and pulling out that phosphate like super easily. Um, and so creatine, whenever we take creatine, what that does is we ingest it and creatine gets stored in our muscles and then um, it gets stored as creatine phosphate, okay? And so whenever we are working and we're exercising, et cetera, um, what we do is we have three ATP and whenever we um, use um, our energy, we use an, a P specifically. So we lose a phosphate from ATP and ATP stands for um, adenosine triphosphate. So that's what the T stands for, it stands for the tri. And when we lose one phosphate from that to, um, per, to perform an activity or a function, um, then it becomes adenosine diphosphate, di meaning two. And so what happens is we have creatine phosphate Whenever we go from ATP down to ADP, that creatine phosphate, the phosphate will come off the creatine phosphate and the phosphate will go on to the diphosphate and then we have a replenishment of ATP again. So that's how we um, are able to use creatine in order to help us with our performance. Um, so it helps us produce more ATP rapidly um, to give us more and better energy during intense activity. The cognitive benefits come from an increase in memory cognitive decline, um, such as um, a decrease in cognitive decline, which may be helpful in preventing Alzheimer's and mental fatigue. Um, all things that help us day to day inside training in our daily work life. So it's just super helpful, um, not only performance wise, but also for our mental health. Um, adding the benefits of improving recovery, strength and power output. Creatine is very likely to help us increase muscle mass in our body because it helps us you know, get through those um, workout sets better. So, you know, if we're doing, you know, let's say three sets of eight reps um, of an exercise, if we're able to quickly and easily replenish ATP faster, we may be able to bump out a few more reps. So instead of being only able to do three sets of eight reps, we might be able to do three sets of 10 reps. Um, ultimately, creatine is a great supplement for any person with a goal of gaining lean muscle mass. And we all know our ladies out there do want to have that nice toned look and have some muscle showing. Um, as when we lose weight and we get in shape, we don't want to just like look softer. We want to look leaner and more toned and more fit. Losing fat and retaining muscle tissue during a calorie deficit and are seeing cognitive advantage in daily life. Again, there have been no um, big risks when it comes to uh, creatine phosphate. Um, and I would say the last thing about this is when it comes to supplements, they are not, not tightly regulated, meaning that anybody can put a supplement on the market and kind of just be like, here's my supplement, here's what it does. And like um, the claims are not really tightly regulated other than saying it can't treat or it can't treat a disease or condition. Um, but the way that supplements work is that Supplements um, don't have to be approved before they go onto the market technically. Um, they also ha don't have to be tested for adverse or negative side effects. It is not until that supplement is on the market and many consumers buy those supplements and then many, many, many consumers must say like, hey, this gave me a negative um, side effect or this had a negative side effect or this caused a condition or this caused me to have problems and affected my health. Until many, many people do that, the supplement is out there. And so um, creatine, again, being the most studied um, is out there and no negative side effects, adverse effects, et cetera, are mentioned about creatine. So it's really safe to use. Um, something that people can get confused about when it comes to creatine is that um, they may worry about it or misunderstand its effects on the kidneys. So creatine, cre I'm sorry, creatinine is a biomarker used to test kidney function. And when there are high levels of creatinine showing up on test results, this is a warning that you may have poor kidney health or poor kidney function. However, whenever you do take creatine, this may cause creatinine to show up higher on um, your test results whenever you are you know getting those your blood work done um and so is this does not show that we are having poor kidney function due to ingesting or using creatine it's just showing us that hey we do have more creatinine in the body um so that being said um 
if you see higher levels of creatinine due to after you have been taking creatine, it's not something negative. It's just saying that, hey, there is more creatinine in the body. And you may also see an increase in um, creatinine due to intense exercise or an increase in protein-based foods. Um, but so the only time that you should ever be concerned about creatinine or um, kidney function, et cetera, is whenever you've had a history of kidney issues or failure or surgery, um, then that's when I would generally not recommend that you take creatine. So again, please go and talk to your doctor about any recommendations that we make here. Um, number three is going to be vitamin D. So vitamin D is an essential vitamin that is fat soluble. So if you remember earlier, I said vitamin B as in boy is water soluble and vitamin D is fat soluble, um, meaning we need fat present to transport the nutrient cells. Um, that is why it becomes more important to supplement while dieting due to lowering body fat levels. So if we are reducing the amount of body fat that we have when we are dieting on our health and fitness journey, um, that's where vitamin D is actually stored in, in fat. Um, so if we have less fat, um, then we're going to be losing vitamin D along the way too. The sun is a major source of natural vitamin D, but in today's society and common lifestyle around the world, um, it's very common it's very uncommon for us to get enough vitamin D just from sunshine. And our body is supposed to produce that vitamin D itself. The sun is what actually activates it and says like, hey, um, we can make vitamin D now. Um, but since we tend to sit inside all day and we tend not to get enough sunshine and with the difference in seasons um, and us being covered or et cetera and clothes, um, we are just not getting as much sunshine as we usually could um, exposing our skin to, um, to the sun and producing vitamin D. And therefore, aiming to get more out of our diet or through supplementation is often recommended. The, vitamin, the benefits of vitamin D are widespread, including hormonal balance, immune health, bone strength, cognitive enhancement, and decreasing disease risk, and so much more. So the way that I recommend taking vitamin D um, is that... Um, I recommend that 90% or more of people take vitamin D. Again, like I said, we look at lab work all the time with our clients, et cetera. And a lot of them are very much um, insufficient with vitamin D. Um, and just to say here, the difference between um, being insufficient and deficient is that deficient means that it is your levels of this supplement of this nutrient are low enough to be able to actually cause um, health problems. So negative adverse effects. Um, and then insufficient is like, it's not low enough to cause problems yet, but it's also not where it could be for you to have optimal health. Um, and you know, if you were to keep it as being insufficient and not trying to improve it, you may potentially go down to being deficient eventually. Um, so vitamin D, um, so the best form of vitamin D to get is vitamin D3 and taking a daily dose between one to 5,000 IUs per day. And um, I do recommend taking that again with a fat um, supplement or with um, foods that contain fats because again, vitamin D has to be transported with something that is um, has fat in it for it to be transported. Um, okay. So that's enough about vitamin D. Let's talk about protein powder. So again, going back to health and fitness, this is really a fitness thing. It can also be a health thing as well too. Um, so as you probably know, when it comes to protein, it is super helpful for you to reach your fitness goals. Um, it can help aid in repair, recovery, and muscle growth, weight management, and so much more. Um, so that's why I said it's a health um, supplement as well, too, because it helps weight management. And um, the more that you are in a healthy weight range, um, the more um, health benefits that you will see. Um, so if you are somebody who um, is um, uh, somebody who resistance trains or um, work out, works out, et cetera, um, you can actually see an increase um, in muscle soreness from this and it can actually hinder how your muscles function. So I, for example, did a weightlifting session yesterday and my legs hurt today um, because they're sore from that session. Um, so me trying to go in and perform any leg exercises or, you know, running or any activities that involve my legs is going to be super hard today. But using protein powder can reduce these problems and help you better perform for future workouts um, because it helps aid in that recovery and that repair of that muscle. 
Um, so when it comes to protein, um, the higher your activity level, the more protein that I would recommend. Um, the US dairy Dietary Guidelines recommend at least 10% of your daily calories coming from protein. So if we kind of do the math in our head, let's say an average of daily calories are 2000 calories per day. Um, let's say 10% of that um, is the, the recommendation by the um, US Dietary Guidelines, then that would be 200 calories. And so how many grams of protein would that be? That would actually be 50 grams of protein. Um, so the RDA is the basic protein requirement or the bare minimum in order for you to keep from getting sick. Um, so 50 grams of protein is not a lot for somebody who is super active. It's just the bare minimum. Um, so if you're strength training or if you're an endurance athlete, somebody who does, you know, long distance um, activities, you'll need more protein daily compared with a requirements of non-athletes. So the more active you are, the more that you're trying to reach those health and fitness goals, the more protein that you need. Um, and those um, estimates um, are not exact. They can vary from person to person, activity, activity, body weight, et cetera. Um, but what has been shown to be helpful is for it to be 0.8 to 1.2 approximately um, grams per pound of body weight, um, all the way up to three times the amount of protein um, than a sedentary person. So um, it's a wide variety, but you can go all the way up to three times of what a sedentary person can use. Um, when it comes to proteins, there's different types of protein powders that you can choose from. Whey is a fast acting protein and easily digestible source of protein, arguably the best and most efficient at both of those, um, but both. Um, of those compared to any other forms of protein. Um, this makes it beneficial for muscle growth um, and it has been shown in studies to be very effective at helping quickly to start that recovery process. So again, it is easily digestible and fast acting. Um, and the reason that we suggest protein is usually due to convenience. So making sure that you can have you know, easy recovery faster, um, whether you don't have time to cook a meal or whether, you know, again, um, being able to easily digest it and for it to be fast acting, um, you know, just drink a shake and versus having to sit down, eat a meal, um, make the meal beforehand and then go through and digest that meat or that substance that you're using as a protein source. So um, whey is pretty good for that. Casein, on the other hand, is potentially better for consumption at night because it will slowly release as you sleep, allowing a more steady flow of amino acids um, and muscle protein synthesis and recovery. So because it is more slow acting, it can help throughout the night um, as we are sleeping and continue that um, anabolic effect of protein. So that building and repairing effect as we are sleeping, which when we are sleeping is the best time for us to recover. Okay. Um, also, if you're somebody, so casein and whey both come from an animal source. So if you're somebody who's vegan or vegetarian and you choose, or if you just can't tolerate um, dairy sources or whey or casein in particular, um, non-dairy is good as well too. There's, um, when you do look for non-dairy items um, or protein powders, make sure you check the back and make sure that it lists out the amino acids and has an amino acid panel. If it does not, I would not trust that source because it couldn't, um, the protein could be spiked. I can make a whole other video on this. Um, so just make sure it has the amino acid panel on there. I always look for about 25, 30 grams of protein per serving. And I also look for about um, 2.5 gram of leucine as an amino acid for that 25 to 30 grams per serving. Um, so again, I can make a whole other video on this and I probably will. Let me go ahead and write that down in my notes here. Um, non-dairy protein um, amino acid panel. Okay, um, next is going to be omega-3. So omega-3 three fatty acid, um, these two specific fatty acids we need are the two specific fatty acids that we need are EPA and DHA. And these can be found in more food items outside of just fish, but their potency in fish is greater than most. EPA and DHA are very important for human development. Um, so babies and youth and kids and all that. Um, it's also able to regulate inflammation in the body. And it's also helpful for various metabolic signaling pathways um, and even cognitive and brain function. Um, Omega-3s are also known to help with some reduction in blood sugar, triglycerides, and even depression, shown to potentially improve mood in those suffering with major depression. 
Um, so when it comes to overall health, cognitive improvements, joint inflammation, disease prevention, the metabolism, liver detoxification, skin, hair, and nails, the list kind of goes on as it seems it's a powerful supplement and worth taking. Um, so you can get it from fish oils. Omega-3s come from fish oils. And if you are non, um, not able to use fish oils because you are vegan or vegetarian and you choose not to, um, similar as above, we can also use algae oil. Algae oil is a vegan replacement for fish oils. It has the same omega-3 fatty acids and all the same benefits as fish oil, with the downside that the price is typically a little bit higher um, just because it is more difficult to make than fish oil is. The other important thing to remember is that the amount needed as a vegan is probably one and a half to two times more total EPA DHA than the animal product. The reason is simple. It's because um, uh, besides fish or algae, omega-3 fatty acids are mainly found in meat and eggs, uh, making it much more difficult for a vegan to get them throughout their daily food as well too. But there are some other um, seed and nuts that you can get omega-3s from as well. Um, so supplementing with omega-3 is very good for those who do um, eat meat and animal products or non-meat and animal products. And along with this, I will say that omega-3s are going to be very, very helpful nowadays when it comes to um, keeping us healthy because omega-3s um, are like the good omegas um, and the omega-6s are kind of like the bad. And we find the omega-6 um, fatty acids and being in a lot of processed oils. And if you think about a lot of the modern food now, we have a lot of processed oils like French fries, um, anything that's like cooked or you know, deep fried, et cetera. Um, anything that's like produced in a factory has a lot of oils in it. And these cheap oils that we have have a lot of omega-6s and those are inflammatory. Um, so omega-3s are anti-inflammatory. So just if you are somebody who is eating um, like a lot of processed food or a lot of junk food or a lot of deep fried food, omega-3s would be super helpful for you. But I would say just in general, taking a supplement with a poor diet is not going to help you. So trying to improve your diet first um, and focusing on that bottom of the pyramid of food quality is going to be more important than anything else. When it comes to taking omega-3s, um, a daily dose of 1.5 to 3 grams um, is going to probably be best um, in terms of seeing benefits. And then, that is it. I went through all five supplements already. Um, so if you have any questions about these products, please let me know. Um, I can go ahead and the comments will be open for you down below. So please ask questions in the comment. If this was super helpful for you, please let me know. But these are gonna be the five products that you're gonna go get the most thing for your buck out of when it comes to reaching your health and your fitness goals. Outside of that, just remember, like I said before, when it comes to adding supplements into your diet, making sure that you are focusing on the basics of good quality nutrition, eating enough, eating a variety of foods is going to be super helpful as long as that. Um, making sure that we're working out and being active as well in order to get the most benefit from our, for our health and our fitness goals. Um, so that being said, if you want to know more, I mentioned a couple of times here that we do work with clients to help them reach their health and fitness goals. If that sounds like something that you're interested in, you want some guidance along the way, please feel free to fill out the application linked below here in the description of this video. And please let me know if you have any big questions that are coming up as you go throughout this video. And I hope that you guys have a great rest of your day and thank you for watching.